Okay, so one of the first steps in creating the set extension is to examine the plate. The first thing you notice is that the traffic is moving on the street and the sidewalk. It's really important to note too that the camera is not moving. That's a good thing. It's going to make it easier for us to put the set extension into this plate and later on we're going to add a post camera move in, in our composite. So here we have the plate in Photoshop and notice that the building at the top is cut off. This is often done by design when you're shooting plates for for set extensions because you really just want to capture all the action at the bottom of the frame. Now I turn the set extension on and you can see that we've had we have the control of adding whatever we want up to the top of the frame and beyond. I'll toggle it on and off back and forth a few times and you can take a look at the differences between the plate and the set extension. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how this was created and I'll show you how you do a shot like this for a uh, feature film. Okay, so one of the first steps in creating this set extension is going to be finding our vanishing point. I'm going to trace some of these perspective lines and ultimately come up with a point that converges that'll be called our vanishing point and if we draw a line straight across from that, that would be our horizon line. And we'll do the same thing for the right side of the image, tracing the occasional line in our buildings that is parallel to the ground. It looks like that vanishing point is ending up just off of frame. So now I'm just going to increase the canvas size. First of all, I'm going to increase it, its height. Since I'm adding CG to this set extension later on, I want to make sure that our horizon line is cutting right through the middle of the entire set extension painting we have here. So what you can do is increase the canvas size height uh, randomly, try and aim for something that's a little bit bigger than you anticipate, and then you can go in and uh, measure from the horizon line downwards and measure upwards and just eventually crop the image until it is equal on the top and bottom of that horizon line. Okay, so now I'm going to increase the width of the canvas size and that way I can just go and uh, make sure that we can see where those green lines are going to converge. I'll just retrace them and we'll try and get a, get a point out there in space that we can see. It's a little easier to work with when it's visible as opposed to guessing exactly where it is, where it might be off of the frame. So that'll be the point that we use right there. Seems to line up. And now let's just jump ahead. I've went and traced a bunch more lines from that same vanishing point. And I'm going to keep them quite tight, especially in the region just above that central building because that's where I know that's where I know we're going to add a significant amount of of uh set extension. Now, in this case, I just prefer to brighten up that background card, the background layer to a little bit of a gray value just so that I can see uh, the, the end of my image. I like to set my background image to be black in Photoshop and sometimes it makes it hard to see um, a black layer and where it ends, where the perimeter of my Photoshop document is. So I'm just going to go and uh, stretch up some of these values uh, just to get some values up there and uh, really it's time to start playing around with some type of form up at the top of this building. Since the building was cropped off and the camera was locked off, um, really what we're going to try and do is we're going to keep all the moving street activity and uh, we're going to go and create a set extension that builds off of this building. We're going to cover up parts and then the very top, since it doesn't exist in the plate, we're going to go and design our own signage and 
mechanical elements for the top of the building and um, in the end try and get the whole thing to match the plate. This is a typical type of project that you might encounter in doing set extensions. Uh, I've done several of these for feature films and what we do is we when, we when we're on set we will lock the camera off that is the camera is on a tripod and does not move and we'll shoot the activity and we'll be framed for the activity on the road. Uh, we want to get all the traffic moving, all the people walking around in front of the storefronts. That's really the most important part of the plate. And then the goal is to create a set, a set extension that will enhance the plate by letting the audience see what the director had in mind regarding his environment. So because we're going to extend and add to that part of the plate, it's not really that important that the top of the, these buildings are chopped off. They're out of the uh, framing of the original plate photography because again really the most important part is all the moving footage at the bottom. We're going to keep those people, we're going to keep the traffic, let them move and our set extension will simply add to all the static architecture with the exception of moving signs and uh, we'll get to animating that later on. So the way I'm painting here is I'm basically eye dropping a bunch of color from the plate itself and I'm just taking color cues um, pulling from the color palette that is inherent in the plate and I'm trying to keep in mind the light sources that are hitting our building and what possible light sources we might want uh, visible here at the top of the building as well as what parts of our building here at the top of the set extension might be catching light since it is a very colorful scene overall there seems to be a lot of neon and colored floodlights I'm going to try and keep that that idea going in the design of the set extension and uh, I feel that if you try and design the shot in that in that manner with those ideas in mind you're really going to set yourself up for a more a more successful outcome Now you can probably tell I'm, I'm really just sketching really loosely, getting a splash of color up in there. Use the squint test. Squint your eyes, especially when you're zoomed out of an image, and see how you interpret the image. Don't worry about what the signs read right now, just as long as there's some type of color up there. And ask yourself how the color works with the rest of the plate. Are the colors vibrant enough and bright enough for neon signs? Is the floodlight that's hitting the building parts up at the top, is that acceptable? And overall you want to ask yourself where do we want to draw the audience's eye in the set extension? That's a really important part of creating the set extension. It's very similar to, to the way you create any map painting. You really want the first read to be very successful. And by that I mean the audience is only going to have a few short seconds during the movie to take a look at this at this animation play. and what I'm hoping to do is start here at the bottom and as we tilt upwards we'll reveal what's up there at the top of the set extension I'll show you that framing in just a second here and that'll be really be the point of the shot yes the traffic and the uh, bustling city cityscape below is very busy but really the reason why the director is coming to you to create this set extension is to show off that that building, the title on the building, probably the signs, and say, okay, this is this is establishing where we're going with the scenes following this in the movie. Now, I chose this plate as a great example for creating a set extension because it's very complicated with regard to lighting. There's a lot of light polluting the air itself. And there's a lot of light hitting the building. The building was chopped off in the plate, which is a perfect example of how um, of projects I've worked on in the past. And overall, uh, I feel that if if one can accomplish a successful extension of this type of a plate, then really uh, you can probably.
top, very much like I did in the previous lecture with the with the uh, lake towers. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to keep in mind that this shot is framed at the bottom, and then 100 frames later during the movie, we're going to see the top of it. And I want to make sure that the compositions of each of these keyframes are are nice and nicely proportioned, nicely framed. And I want to make sure that I'm constantly thinking about drawing the audience's attention to those elements that I feel are important using that framing. These layers will also act as a guideline when I get into the composite. I'm going to composite this shot in shake. And when I'm in shake, I can use my uh, crop, crop layer as much as I did in the previous lecture as well as guidelines as to uh, animating my shot and framing. So I have a pretty rough sketch here completed. And uh, it's almost time to go into 3D Studio Max and start modeling this. But before I do, I do have to make sure that my horizon line is indeed in the middle of my canvas from top to bottom. So you can choose whatever method you want to find the middle and crop your image accordingly. I usually just uh, draw a marquee line um, on the bottom half of the image and copy and hit Control N and the values that pop up are the width and height of that image and then I do f the same for the top portion and by the end you just want to make sure that the heights of both the top half and the bottom half are equal. Now the camera is really the reason why you want to have that horizon line in the center of your entire scene. It's a lot easier to find a camera match with a CG camera um, within 3D Studio Max or, or any 3D software for that matter if that horizon line is right in the middle of the canvas and it certainly makes things a lot easier when all of your vertical lines in the plate are purely vertical and because that does seem to be the case in our plate that will make things slightly easier in matching the perspective but one of the key challenges you'll see here is that uh, we need to figure out how far the camera has to be from uh, that central building. In this case, it's just a cube right now. And what lens to use. So I just drew um, a big, a big uh, cube that represents our building. And I have a camera that is basically looking straight across to the horizon. It's a little bit off the ground, but uh, it's not looking up. obvious as to where a corner might be because we did draw all of those vanishing point lines. And then we can just adjust the camera and uh, try and get something that looks like the cube is lining up with our vanishing point. Right now this camera seems to have a slightly different lens than we had when the uh, plate was shot. We'll try a 22 millimeter try 26, just try a bunch of different lenses. And really we're just trying to get the top edges and the bottom edges of this cube to line up with our red and green vanishing points in that background image. So oftentimes it helps a lot if you segment the cube so that you can see more horizontal lines and more vertical lines breaking that cube up. And it'll give you uh, a better indication of whether or not you're on the right track to following the lineup of the red and green lines. As well if you push the height to an extreme just like I did here, the lines at the very top of the frame, well when they match you know that you're you have a pretty close match to uh, a camera lens and position because that's the extreme end of distortion. I'm just going to keep the cube at a shorter height for now because I do want to try and uh, mimic the height of the building and the plate. So 
So as you can see, that process is a little bit trial and error. You really just gotta estimate some dimensions, take a guess as to how many feet that cube should be based on what you think the building would be in real life, how many feet the camera should be away from that building. And then through experience, you can take a educated guess as to what lens might be might have been used to shoot that plate. And you can mimic that lens setting in your CG software. If you don't have a lot of experience with lenses and photography, uh, it might take you a little longer to find a camera match. But understanding of lenses and how they relate to the vanishing points and overall the steepness of those uh, converging uh, perspective lines. Now at this point in time you've probably figured out that I'm just simply copying the cubes around and sliding them around. As you slide them around in X and Y in the X and Y axes you do want to try and just keep them moving purely in those axes and you really don't want to rotate them at all. And as we scale them up and down and really just kind of deform them, we can start to line them up with not only the building elements that were existed in the plate, but line them up with the elements that uh, are in that really crude sketch that we made. That's really one of the uh, main purposes of that sketch is to try and get this geometry laid out. And then uh, the secondary benefit is that you'll have a guideline for when you start creating the lighting scenario. So all this model round in the plate, and uh, not all these build, not all these pieces of geometry will be rendered in the final set extension. But as I mentioned before, the large cube is a good placeholder for where the rooftop is and the wall lines are for that building in the plate. So now with a few cylinders I'm just gonna position some geometry where the spires and the antennas on the rooftop should be according to my sketch. You can see that I often move things around in the top view or the front view, left view, what have you, and then I see where they end up in the camera view. Next I'm going to go and create a red shader that is a wireframe shader and that will allow us to see through the building's geometry and just reveal where all the wireframe edges are. this layer with the rest of the set extension and it'll show us where the model lines up and where it doesn't. If you control shift and click and drag from one canvas to another your element will end up being perfectly aligned providing that your canvas sizes on each document were exactly the same. not quite obvious enough right now so I'm just going to go and invert the color of that red wireframe and take a quick glance around at what elements need to be moved around or scaled up um, just 